a uh, couple of other small questions again i keep jumping over them when i keep trying to because we're having such a fun conversation i don't like to derail the bridge cycle back um <laughs> one, one quick one from a while ago was um lighting settings is that a job for a programmer or a level designer oh i saw that yeah 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 and this is one that i think is an interesting question because it sort of speaks to a larger issue which is as i've said i firmly consider myself a software developer mm -hmm. i can use unity and i can talk about you know how the animation system works in unity and i can use i can make my own basic shaders and i can use the material system and i know how to um you know change the cube maps and do my lighting and uh, manage a lot of the unity stuff uh but i try not to wherever humanly possible because i don't like it now that's just the unfortunate truth is i just don't like a lot of the unity approach to certain things uh, but i made a point of learning how to do it mm. so the answer to the question of is lighting settings a job for a programmer or a level designer well wherever humanly possible i make the level designers but I learned how to do it because it's something that you should know how to do because there's a lot of micro optimizations you can do when you understand how the lighting settings work. Yeah. Um, especially things like light probes. Like, for example, Bracky oh, yeah. said his video does a really good job of pointing out that a lot of people make the mistake when using light probes of evenly distributing them. Because mm -hmm. their understanding is they are a probe, you basically build a grid of them. But that's not the case. You actually want to place them in areas of light change. That's yeah. the point of a light probe. It represents a uh, someone taking a snapshot of what is the lighting at this region. And so there's a lot of stuff you can learn by learning how the light work and how bounce lighting works. Like, for example, so many people drag around the directional lights, the, the default lights you get, but position doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, it it's doesn't do rotation. <laughs> like, it doesn't do anything. And so there's things like that, which are just sort of learning how to do the lighting stuff will just make your life easier, both for custom projects and for working with people. So the question of, is it a job for a designer or a programmer? It doesn't matter. You should know how to do it anyway. <laughs> as, as a game developer, yeah, you should. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and it's 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 one of those things because Unity really does expose you to everything. You know, if you, even if you're just a single developer on a on a team, you you still have to open up. You, technically, you still open up the Unity editor. You get you still get access to everything. So yeah, it's definitely good to know. You know it's funny about lighting too. I think a lot of people really like messing around with shaders and messing around with like particle systems and like playing and being creative i love the lighting system like i i, I maybe it's because i'm such a control freak or something but i or i have ocd or like light ocd but i love messing with the the light probes and getting them just right and like like dragging an object in and out just to make sure that it works mm -hmm. i don't know it's i guess there's a vis there's a visual aspect to it it's really rewarding to finally bake the scene and like actually see the lighting changing correctly i will admit almost every single demo project even if i'm even if i open a brand new unity project with the sole intention of writing a script that changes some values for the sake of testing something, I will almost always add the post-processing stack <laughs> yeah, yeah. purely so I can just have, you know, a little, like, and also I'll always change it from gamma to linear for my, you know, like, and everything. I'll just like these little tweaks and I'll go, I just want it to look a certain way. I want it to look nice and slightly sort of uh, <laughs> cinematic because again, it's that sort of like sense of pride in your work. So, yeah. yeah. For sure, I've been I've been doing a lot of boring. I shouldn't say that. I've been doing I've been using a lot of two D projects uh, mm. for my examples lately, um, and it's like it kind of makes me sad because I like playing with the lighting and I don't really get that opportunity. So I think I'm gonna start doing a three D three D projects moving forward. My tutorial videos. My yeah. my my wife had a pretty good idea. She she said that I should commission someone to create a three D model of me that would be mm. rigged and work in Unity, uh, so that you know if I ever make a game example, it would literally be me you know running around inside of the uh, the example project. That was pretty funny. Although I I usually just do a first person view because I'm too lazy to drag in a a model. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, now, that's one thing I do quick corners on wherever humanly possible. I always. Um, Try to use a first person just because I don't. I just don't like. It's, it's not that it's hard. To, well, it's hard to do. It's not. It's not. A, it's more just a nuisance to manage, matching your your animations to the speed of the walking to the timing it and getting your blend trees correct. It's just like it feels so fiddly, and I just hate doing it. It's one of those things that I'm more than happy to pawn off on someone else and say, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, I'll do, I'll program the character controller, but let someone else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah.